Well, I kind of just did 10 minutes on a whole bunch of it. But I suppose in this era, with the World Health Organization about to destroy nationhood Mm -hmm. by creating a fascist control over everyone's health, uh, which really is already here uh, if you look at the signs. Um, The health of the American has (laughs) diminished so greatly in the last 50 years. And, And even if you're not a statistician or a scientist Uh, with credentials, you can look at that and start putting the pieces together if you're willing to look around and figure out how health has been. uh, We've been robbed of our health, and we've been left with a health, a so-called health system that is based on illness and uh, and is uh, the only remedies will be either surgery or chemical. Welcome to Fire Out with Faust, everybody. I am Faust Chicho, and today I'm honored and excited to be joined by Alana Freeland. Let me tell you about Alana, what she has been up to, in case you have not heard of her. She's a writer, a ghost writer, a lecturer, a storyteller, and a teacher. She researches and writes on deep state issues, including stories of survivors of MK Ultra, ritual abuse, and invasive electromagnetic weapons. She's now perhaps best known for her book, the one that I'm um, almost through chemtrails, harp, and the full spectrum dominance of planet Earth. They already published under an ionized sky from chemtrails to space fence lockdown. And that's about the resurrection of the SDI, the Strategic Defense Initiative, which was under Reagan, right, Alana? That's when that first yep, came out. Yeah, back. Reagan, more importantly, George H.W. Bush and mm. Big Dick Cheney. The devil himself, George H.W. The H. devil w. himself, um, yes. And uh, she's just concluding, and I, as we were speaking before, rewriting uh, her third book of that trilogy, which is, I believe, still called Synth- Synthetic Biology and Transhumanism. No, no, no it's, it's not still uh, called that. The, Stand the by for third, the title. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you a new version. The third uh, book was finished in October 2021, and it's called, it's got a long title, but it tells you exactly what I cover. Uh, it's Geoengineered Transhumanism. How the environment has been weaponized by chemicals, electromagnetism, and nanotechnology for Mm. synthetic biology. Wow. That's why it's 650 pages and why I'm rewriting it as two books for inner traditions. (laughs) Wow. Um, Wow. I can't wait. I can't wait to read it. uh, Alana's undergraduate degree was in creative writing and biology, and she has a master Master of Arts from St. John's College, which specializes in historiography. Hysteri- um, so, thank you so much for beaming in, Alana. I, I'm I'm so excited to have you on the show. This is a topic that um, a lot of people just are in complete denial about. Other people have come around, <laughs> you know, but it's a topic that easily gets you. For some reason, you know, after everything that has gone on, you'd think that there wouldn't be much that can get you dismissed as, you know, a, quote, conspiracy theorist or a crazy or a kook. But for some reason, this, you talk about this and people are like, oh, that's, they just can't imagine it. And I'm like, "Um, have you looked up at all in the last 10 years? Well, and and also the cover stories are so effective. The two cover stories, global warming and climate change. Those are just sheer cover stories. They have nothing to do with carbons. They have nothing to do with the rhetoric that they throw out to people. So it kind of um, just uh, makes it all geoengineering just go away into solar radiation management. That's those jets up there that are helping us out and, and helping us survive climate change. It's all a setup. And uh, because there are so few people 
I mean, we've had people die uh, in this uh, in this anti geoengineering movement, and nobody ever hears about it. Uh, we have had amazing activists who have been hit so hard with electromagnetic weapons that they bow out of the movement. So, you know, we have suffered over the years, and this is about 20 years of struggle. Uh, and now uh, there are there's a little bit here and there, but not much. And uh, I just I'm just putting this out for the future, really. I'm putting it out for people in 50, 25 to 50 years who, who go, why wasn't anyone talking about this? This is huge. Yeah. And then they're going to find my little old books back here where I try to give the public a sense of how large this is and how classified it is. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's not just another issue. This is the biggest elephant in the living room. And uh, I'm, I'm just uh, kind of flying solo here. Other than a few really good guys, one of whom just recently died, Mike Morales, who was our excellent weatherman for pointing out geoengineered weather, uh, where these weather events are completely contrived and created by chemicals, electromagnetics, and nanotechnology. So, you know, it, it's, it's here in spades, but mm -hmm. look at how we're just being catapulted with one issue after another. So yeah. people can hardly breathe, much less keep up on how large this picture is. It's, uh, it, it is, a, uh, you know, they're, they're very good. They're, it's like the snake eating its own tail. They're very good at setting up a situation so that they have, um, what's the word they used in the Kennedy assassination? Uh, uh, plausible in deniability, uh, deniability, you know, and, and yeah. they're, so they're really good at that. And they're also very good at setting up uh, uh, something that even if you catch them, you know, like you have these you have these fires going on right now. And, you know, so we see the planes spraying fire. And of course, they just turn around and say those planes are attempting to control the fire by create by by controlling the burn. So, that I mean, it's an out. It's a, it's a perfect out. We'll never know if they're controlling the fire or making the fire we have no way of knowing we just it's a perfect way for them to say and it's the same thing with this with these chemtrails and what they say they're spraying for yeah. you know um and and what many of us believe they're spraying for many of us know the agenda many of us know their desired outcome and we know they're not spraying because they care about our health but there are those out there who are extremely naive who have been conditioned by the state to believe this nonsense that big brother is looking out for us instead of just looking at us <laughs> instead of uh, uh, tracking and tracing and targeting us yeah uh i think also the control of the media i mean i watched it happen in, in um, 1973 to be exact that's when the CIA took over all major media in the United States, and that includes the networks. So, uh, you know, you just don't really have a chance when um, the media is lying and are receiving their direct orders all the time. It's actually remarkable that um, they, I guess the reason that they feed us so much distraction and so many sort of true and lots of spin and lies uh, kind of, you know, newscasting, that's really mm -hmm. an interesting phrase, isn't it? Newscasting, mm -hmm. like spell casting. Yeah. Uh, and that's really how it is in the land of the Bill of Rights, uh, mm -hmm. amazingly so. So the naivete of the American, particularly, I find European, I have a lot of Europeans who follow me uh, and are much more savvy than the mm -hmm. average American. Americans are just um, wonderful doers, uh, wonderful people, really, mm -hmm. but not wise and yeah. not at all good at thinking. They're, <laughs> they're doers. They're not thinkers. And they, they can't right, get their heads, you know, yeah. kind of around, wrap their brain around the fact that the authority figures are the ones who are lying. And that, yeah. that puts us in a real vice grip. But... Uh, you know, I'm a student of Rudolf Steiner, and he makes it very clear that this era that we're living through now, 
uh, is an era in which we must divest ourselves of our faith in leaders uh, and mm-hmm. authority figures, and we must take on this task ourselves by uh, by really becoming very conscious, uh, mm-hmm. very discerning of, of the difference between like a lie and and a half truth. Uh, we have a lot of uh, catching up to do, yeah. especially in an era in which we have all these electronic toys that lead us uh, six ways to Sunday to semi-truths and, uh, and mm-hmm. fantasies. And we, we just don't know the difference anymore. So that's why it's important that we now really sort of, um, sort of concentrate on just a, an area of life, no matter what you choose you can't really just be the passive childlike American oh who uh, assumes that all the technology coming out is good and that your choices are good and that, you know, it's uh, somebody else's fault that the, everything's turning bad outside. And, you know, that's, that's the challenge. And I'm just adding another piece of the puzzle that is very assiduously avoided in the news accounts. I mean, how often do you hear the word geoengineering? You don't hear the word chemtrails anymore because everybody no. learned to laugh Not at that lot. as a conspiracy yeah. theory, which is the CIA's uh, way of uh, dismissing things. So, uh, you know, it, it takes a while to realize that the, there's shadows moving behind things that are happening and that you really should be concentrating on the shadow. Not yeah. really the thing that you're being That's told right. about. Never and, the thing they're pointing at. You know, that no. is the... That, that is the ultimate distraction. There's, they're That's always great. pointing at something, and it's always to keep your eyes from something else. You know, and, and I agree with you wholeheartedly. You cannot have, I mean, you, you condition and entrain a population not to think critically, and they, and they become, you know, very good worker bees and not very creative or critical thinkers. And that's the sad truth that has happened in our country. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm, a fan of William Cooper. I don't know. It's, some people love him. Some people have other opinions of him. He was a civilian. He well, was I in the know Navy. Who Cooper was. Yeah, yeah, of course you do. You know, he yeah. was one of the first people telling, sounding the alarm about this. And of course, Clinton named him the enemy of the state with his radio show because he was fearless. You know, I mean, he knew they were coming for him eventually, but he talked a lot about this and he, he was intelli- in intelligence for eight years, I think, when he was in the Navy. And, uh, you know, he was trying to warn people way back when. But he always said, you know, as a nation, we've become complacent. We, we have truly become, you know, they, they, they've got us into a point where it's going to it's up in the air whether we're going to be able to 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 take the reins back, you know, and save ourselves from these from these few people who have taken the most powerful positions on the planet um and that's the sad truth you know i it, uh, i i don't know i don't know you know uh, god willing we get it together in time to save ourselves but you know sometimes i wonder if the will to do that is there um well but- i could i could respond to that because i i do think it's uh if you're thinking of a particular path i think it's too late uh of a path back into anything we used to have. Mm. That's over. But a path through the flames and the, and the destruction that's going on now, we, we have yet to imagine our way through. And, and I say that very advisedly to people because that's one of the, you know, I've never owned a TV, Faust, never owned mm. one. I never owned an iPhone, never will. These wow. are weapon systems. And uh, the biggest weapon system I own is this little computer that I'm talking to you on. Uh, I have to have that for my writing career. But mm-hmm. uh, I think one of the things missing in Americans now, and, and I'm pretty old. I'll be 76 this month. I've lived wow. a long time. I'm a, I'm a 60s person. I was in the 60s generation. I, I always reported for newspapers and, uh, and college uh, papers uh, through all of the turmoil of the 60s and 70s. Mm-hmm. And so um, I've seen a lot. And what I notice is that TV has really um, stolen our ability to make 
uh, imaginations. And when I say imagination, I don't mean uh, fantasies where you can amuse yourself. I don't mean self-entertainment. I mean the ability to make mental pictures of concepts and um, in, in our case, national security issues that were never told about in the newspapers or, or news shows, uh, we can make pictures of those by getting enough data, enough information that we've read and enough stories that we've read through to get a, get a, a sense of what the government is doing because we have been under a national security state since the year I was born. I was born in 1947. So we can't we can't just wait for the experts to tell us, mm -hmm. for uh, for you know the the papers to come before us with the truth. Uh, that's not going to happen. So uh, now it gets serious, and most yeah. people are just looking for a tail to follow. You know which which sheep. Should I or follow yeah, in order savior. to yeah. get out of this, uh, this where I know things are happening around me, but I feel so helpless because I can't see the truth. And to make to make it clear what is true. Yeah, you can get facts and you can get a lot of statistics. But, you know, as well as I, that you can use facts and statistics <laughs> to sell oh, yeah. anything. So that's not going to lead you to truth, uh, even though your school uh, the school you went to through high school, maybe even through college, has yeah. told you that it's in the textbook. So that's the truth. And right. uh, that is just simply a lie. <laughs> that's not true. So you have to search out the truth. And that's kind of why people like me are so rare, is uh, I don't do it for a career. Because if I were into writing for a career, uh, I would I would have to obey the people that paid That's me right. for the, the things I'm writing. No, I'm a freelance writer, and I I then can uh, go and do a lot of research, and um, I can I can put myself in there as long as I let the reader know that I'm in there. I can do footnotes. I can do whatever I want in making the book tell the truth, yeah. and then that. That reader then, if people read, which of course we don't anymore, uh, that reader could then go to other books and uh, compare and contrast. The problem now with the geoengineering is really there are no books. There are very few. There are a few that are excellent, really excellent, uh, and that preceded me. And now um, we've got about, I'd say, six books maybe. That's, yeah. that's about it. Uh, that you can read with confidence that you're getting the best of the what this particular writer thinks is true. And mm -hmm. so, you know, how do we make those discernments without following somebody? Uh, that's kind of what we're facing. And it's very hard to do. I have a lot of compassion for people, but they ain't going to do it if they've got their head down in their iPhone mm -hmm. and they've mm -hmm. got their TV on it for the six o'clock news. They are no. not going to find the truth through That's these sure. items. This is our control network. Uh, right. And I advise everyone to get rid of those two things, the television and the iPhone. I mean, I'm serious. I am not mm -hmm. kidding. Uh, the iPhone, if you want to go there, I could tell you how it works as a weapon without you even knowing that it's working to control your thoughts. Mm -hmm. And the TV is the same. It, the all the HDs and the flat screens and all that, they all have the microphone. They all have mm -hmm. the filming going on of you in your living room, in your bedroom, wherever it is. So, uh, you know, you are being programmed by these items. And until you break your programming, as any good MK Ultra survivor knows, uh, you, you don't have a prayer in hell to find out what is truly going on. And, 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 I think you can you can extrapolate that into a, a you know a much broader demographic than than MK could be, because in in a sense the trauma and the programming is so vast in this country that you I mean we need people to break the programming period if they're going to discern the truth and they're not going to do it like just like you said watching the news and playing uh, on their iPhones you know that's that's for damn sure. So, but even to own them, I mean, they're both, they both seem to, this is, this is me, seem to have 
uh, addictive elements um, constructed into them. It isn't just you're weak and, you know, you don't want to watch pornography, but you know when the show is on late at night. You know right. when it's on the iPhone. It's as though it's saying, come hither, come hither. And, you know, at the same time, you go on your computer and you're going to get flashy babes or, yeah. or even pedophile like children who are saying, come hither, come hither. I mean, it's built into the technology. It isn't just a matter of our will anymore. And that's why the first thing I say to people who want to survive what is going on now, this full assault that has now gone into the jab, uh, but began, in my opinion, with the electromagnetic um, toys of the CIA and uh, MKUltra. It all began with MKUltra because that's where the paperclip Nazis were brought over right. and helped us contrive that whole program. So, uh, you know, if you want to get out of this whole system that you're now plugged into, uh, it's going to be a real effort. And it's it's hard for people to break bad habits. Yeah, you know, it's, it's the hardest if you've thing. ever been addicted to something that's you know is not good for you, but you've, oh, just, yeah. you've, you've put it in the good department, it's very hard. But that's exactly what we need to do is look at our technology and make some hard decisions. Yeah for our, ourselves, just ourselves, uh, before we go out and try to, you know, let other people know what we've discovered about, <laughs> about how this all works. I, I mean, I, I really do have compassion. So I keep talking and talking and talking and writing and writing and writing. And, you know, it's like, uh, do I think I'm changing a lot? Well, not, not really, but I, I think I'm changing some individuals. Yeah. Some individuals are definitely um, giving up their cell phones, throwing it away, in fact, and yeah. finding that they're having their own thoughts for the first time in years uh, and uh, being feeling so refreshed and so, so free. Uh, I mean, this is this is this is MK Ultra on steroids, all this stuff. Yeah. MK Ultra has fed into everything. I think you're right. Uh, I think everyone's programmed pretty much. And I have to, you know, I have to watch my P's and Q's too. It's not that I'm just evolved or something. It's that I have made very good decisions regarding my relationship with technology. Mm -hmm. Like I, I drive an old car. It's a 2001 Honda. <laughs> uh, when I pull up to a traffic light, sometimes it, it, the traffic light doesn't even know I'm there. That's how know. few computers I have in the oh. car. But you buy a new car and... You're going to be fried. Has everybody put that together? You're going to be fried constantly by driving that car. No, I don't think people have put that together at all. Um, yeah. We're going to, well, let's circle back to that. What I, what I want to do now um, before we go any further is, you know, if you had, you know, we live in a, in a world where, and, and I'm well aware of how, quote, facts and statistics and evidence it, is simply prostituted it's bought it's sold it's dressed up you know it's it's everything but you know these days we have quote you i'm sure you've caught wind of this talking to people we have fact checkers on on, inter, on the internet now which of course many of us you know know when something is coming too far too close to the truth that's when the fact checkers are going to go ahead and put a label on it so you know, in a sense, they're, they're, they give themselves away by doing it. But, you know, if, if you had um, uh, five minutes to, to speak to, you know, the, the people in America today, you know, what, what, what evidence would you point them to to, what, to to lay out this case in a simple way? To you, you know, to, if you could do it in five minutes or ten minutes, you know, what what's the strongest, kind of most irrefutable piece of uh, of evidence that you would give to them, and say, just take a good look at that. If you if you are if you want to begin to understand the nature of this problem. Well, I kind of just did ten minutes on a whole bunch of it, but I suppose in this era, with the World Health Organization about to destroy nationhood mm -hmm. by creating a fascist control 
over everyone's health, uh, which really is already here uh, yeah. if you look at the signs. Um, the health of the American has <laughs> diminished so greatly in the last 50 years. And, and even if you're not a statistician or a scientist uh, with credentials, you can look at that and start putting the pieces together if you're willing to look around and figure out how health has been. Uh, we've been robbed of our health, and we've been left with a health, a so-called health system that is based on illness and, uh, and is uh, the only remedies will be either surgery or chemicals. Mm -hmm. So um, now they're adding another piece that is still invisible to the public. And that's what I write about in the third book, Geoengineered Transhumanism, under the uh, topic of the smart hospital. If you go into a hospital that has all the fancy machinery of, uh, of technological medicine, uh, it, it's not a safe place to be anymore. It's, mm. uh, it's like, a, well, it's kind of a lot like a prison where, uh, you know, you are, you are watched all the time. There are cam cameras everywhere. Uh, the uh, staff are trained in a particular way to keep their eyes right. on you. Uh, there are doctors trained by the American Medical Association schools which Rockefeller. are uh, yeah. completely overpriced <laughs> and, um, and very, uh, very uh, uh, controlling of oh, yeah. what a doctor is allowed to. It's indoctrination, literally. It's, it's, an, it's, an, it's a total indoctrination. You know, it's I have nothing against doctors. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Indoctrination, yeah. yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, so, and, so it would be the health. Yeah, I mean. I would say. We just, I just did a video speaking about how we have the most uh, money spent on healthcare in the whole world. Yeah. We are number one. And our life expectancy is 62nd in the world of all nations. Um, that is staggering. That is ridiculous. You know, people think it's because, um, oh, well, we don't, we don't eat right. And I, you know, I'm not saying that we eat right, but I'm saying we need to look at everything because things are not getting better with That's our right. technology. They're getting much, much worse. We have new allergies, new cancers, and new neurological defects right. that we never even thought possible. Things that did exist are coming on stronger and faster. There is a complete collapse of health in, yeah. in, in American society more than most countries. And, and so I always say like, you know, we have to look at what has changed. You know, if you if, if you're looking, if you're studying a, a, um, a population of dolphins and all of a sudden over the last 20 years, they start dying off. You, you don't I mean, you could examine the individual dolphins, but the first thing you're going to do is look what's in the water. You know, mm -hmm. look what's look what has changed, what has been introduced into sure. the water that wasn't there before. If the population was fine before that. You know, I mean, that's common sense, but people aren't trained to think like that. They're not taught to think like that. They're going to, you know, they're probably going to examine the dolphins. <laughs> um, and I'm just like, where has common sense gone? You should, we, we need to be looking what's in the air, what's in the food and what's mm -hmm. in, what's in the damn uh, medical interventions that they are insisting we give our newborn babies and so on, because there, most people don't know, and I and I'm sad. It's sad to say that most doctors don't even know, and that's dangerous and scary. And uh, you know, but what I, I want to return to, you know, speaking specifically of chemtrails, and I know the onslaught is is very very vast, and it covers a wide array of things. But you know, I know that you are very knowledgeable about, you know, what they're doing it under the guise of. Mm -hmm. And I and I know you're well, very well read on it. And, and I'm going to pick your brain for some of the books besides your own that um, have helped you come into your knowledge. Um, but people who are very, very new to, to this and who are starting to really 
because of the events of the last three years, realize that, wait a minute, you know, this is probably going on. They've been lying about so much, you know, and they're just starting to realize that these things may be real. What, what can you, what, what's some hard evidence you can point to, like as far as testing that has come back, you know, where, where, what you read and where that people can look and, and, you know, kind of be able to say, okay, you know, what is up with that? That is far too, that's an anomaly that can't be explained by whatever they're, the BS they're selling is. Well, early, early in my studies, I've been 13 years in this anti-geoengineering movement. And um, it, it's a matter of putting certain pieces together because right now, if you ask people who know what the word geoengineering even means, which truthfully, I've asked some very knowledgeable people what they think about the geoengineering and they don't even know the word. Uh, that's that, Now that's scary. Mm. <laughs> These are public figures that I've met at conferences. Uh, so um, early on, it was hearsay. And it was the man in the street standing below and, um, and seeing that the contrails, which he was familiar with, uh, which is basically a 30 second at the most uh, short spurt of, uh, of water vapor and particulates. And that will go out behind the jet and uh, last about at most 30 seconds, and then it will dissipate and become part of the rest of the water vapor in the atmosphere. That's the old atmosphere. And that's the old uh, way of looking at planes or jets, really. Uh, but gradually, people like Clifford Carnicum, the independent scientist I worked with for years, uh, Clifford was at one time in the late, from the late 90s through the 2000s, early 2000s, he was really the only scientist looking up and making measurements. He didn't have a big budget. He didn't work for you know, one of the big corporations or a big government. Uh, and he would do his own collections of, uh, of condensation, uh, dust from HEPA filters. What and uh, huh? What was he finding? Oh, uh, well, he was able to measure all of the uh, stuff that would, there would be before the trail had gone oh, over wow. northern New Mexico. And then there would be after the trail had gone over New Mexico. And then when the trails began to increase, as he was noticing, they were increasing. Because that's the program I expose is uh, what, what's known as Project Cloverleaf. That's only one of the many geoengineered programs uh, that uh, has, uh, you can watch it. What I'm trying to get at is you can watch it from the earth. You don't need to be up there behind the jet taking mm -hmm. samples in order to know that that something has changed drastically. He could look at the signatures, because he was a, trained as a chemist, so he could look at the signatures coming out the backs of the jets and know, well, number one, mm -hmm. it's not a contrail, simply because of the length of it and the, the dissipation, the rapid dissipation. But no, then he, later he was noticing these very unique signatures which indicated chemicals were in, uh, in all of them, of uh, what was coming out the backs of the jets. And that's, that's a key moment because that's exactly the moment when he got very alarmed and began to measure not just the condensation uh, left by the jets overhead, but uh, the uh, atmospheric pressure and uh, the composition of the atmosphere itself. And it was relatively early on, after maybe four years of, of this sort of collection of data going on, that he realized that the atmosphere was being changed. Mm. And it was not being changed. It did not appear to be being changed as a sidebar to military programs. Because a lot of these jets that were going overhead, some, some were military, definitely military. But most were commercial jets, and they were spewing out the back. And then, then it began to be not just out the back uh, or, uh, you know, the uh, engine. Mm -hmm. It was the wings, uh, yeah. from the wings 
and uh, that would be two spigots per wing. And, and then pretty soon there were also four spigots around the uh, uh, engine compartment uh, mm -hmm. uh, pipe. So, you know, it, 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 it eventually seemed obvious to him, and his papers can be read at carnicominstitute.org. He has all his papers up, or, or at least 150. And um, you can follow his, uh, his documentation of a program that seemed intentional. It, it wasn't just that it was something the military was leaving uh, for the citizens to uh, undergo. It was, it was intentional. He was finding barium, strontium, aluminum, uh, chromium, uh, uh, lithium, etc. You know, there were various quantities. The most was the aluminum. Well, aluminum we know from years, uh, well, over, over a century of studying aluminum under microscopes and chemically, that uh, it's very bad for human health. It is very I mean, bad for human health. It's very bad yeah. neurologically. It's very bad... For and and where is it coming from? Let me let me say this, Alana. Since you since you mentioned aluminum, I went to my my dentist the other day, and she's holistic. And before I left there, you know, I got ch ch chatting with one of the ladies, and and be because they're holistic and I'm holistic, and I have a podcast, you know, we were, I was there much longer than I anticipated. But they said, would you like to test? Um, we do we we do a test, and we can test your your blood for, you know, all your vitamins, any metals. And I said, sure, I'll do that while I'm here. And, uh, and she was very impressed with some of my levels. And she said, oh, your aluminum is close to high. She said, it's not. And I'm like, aluminum? I don't, I don't have aluminum in my life. I don't have, I don't drink of aluminum cans. I don't eat out of aluminum foil. I don't, there is no aluminum in my life for me to have near high levels of aluminum in my blood. And I thought that was very, very suspicious, you know, and so she's telling me the different ways I can detox from it, but I'm wondering how I got it in me in the first place. Yeah, it's, it, a, it, it's from the chemical trails and it's in a nano, a, a nano size and a nano, uh, a nano particle is one billionth of a meter. So you're not going to be able to see it with the naked eye. Uh, yeah. But that was the second step to what Clifford had begun with the collection of, uh, of data was that there were a few biologists in California. Uh, Rosalie, uh, first of all, Rosalind Peterson, who was uh, worked for the USDA, Department of Agriculture, and uh, she too was finding that uh, there was a lot of aluminum in the soil. And, uh, and, you know, and, and uh, Francis Mangles was another uh, biologist in uh, California. And they began to talk, and there began to be meetings of citizens who were who were examining the water and the soil, uh, not particularly the air. But then the people who examined the air began to wake up. So this has been going on now for about 20 years. But how much have you heard about it in the press? Not much, because uh, this this is like the big secret. And again, at first. Everybody, of course, thought, well, they just don't know how bad this is for human health. That's got to be the reason they're allowing this to happen. And then they began to, you know, when they did FOIAs, they applied to get data from the uh, EPA, the uh, Environmental Protection Agency, mm -hmm. which is supposed to protect the citizenry. Uh, yeah. Well, that, that didn't work out. Uh, the CDC, same thing, and we're experiencing the CDC now as being yet yeah. another perpetrator. Uh, so, you know, they went through steps kind of similar, but maybe in a larger scope because they were dealing with the fact that the environment was being used to really um, poison the, uh, the populace. Uh, yeah. And now it's a, a matter of the jab and the slow waking up process that people are going through of realizing we're in yet another situation, uh, the, uh, the guinea pig situation yeah. uh, that we've had many times. But this one, the geoengineering one, was the biggest one because you're talking about delivery systems 
from jets yeah. that are Im impacting not just uh, the soil, the air, and the water, but we're breathing in on a nano scale all of the detritus that is coming down on us, and it's being purposely sent down to us. Aluminum, we've had aluminum uh, in vaccinations for babies I know, for, a long for time. almost a century now. Yeah. So, uh, so what's going on with that? Uh, is it that they don't know? Well, that's ridiculous. They yeah. know. They know. So, um, you know, it was those two, those were the first two phases. Then the establishment, this is how I've put it, put it together. Then the establishment sort of woke up, oh, they're beginning to see. So let's trot out our PhDs uh, in order to, um, to quell this. Uh, uprising of people's intelligence yeah. as to what's going on. And they so they brought out David Keith, uh, who's one of Bill Gates' boys that he keeps in his back pocket. And uh, David Keith is a geoengineer, uh, and he uh, said a lot of stuff at UN meetings and, and various gatherings, conferences. And, the, and then uh, people began to write papers, the PhDs uh, who were into yeah. environmental and geoengineering types of, of uh, degrees. And, uh, and, and you saw the, the beginning of the movement to, to really yeah. call it and blame. I saw there was 77 of the, of the world's, 76 allegedly of the world's 77 leading climate scientists claim they were not real and, and quote, debunked, debunked chemtrails. And I'm like, that's funny. We're like we're going to believe anyone who the the government is putting forward. Uh, <laughs> but, but people did. <laughs> I know. Well, that, I mean, that's, <laughs> that goes back to what we first talked about: the yeah. lack of critical thought and discernment and yes. intuition. You know, um, which, yeah. I mean, um, yeah. how e you know how how easy is it to for them to release a report like that? I mean, it's I mean, it's quite simple. We've seen it over and over again, isn't it? You know. Well, and another part of this is, just to be fair, um, some of our members uh, tried to get the formula for the jet fuel that, because, you know, there was an argument among the people following these chemtrails as to whether it was coming from, yeah, the, the engine compartment. Was mm. it just from the jet fuel, the JP-8 oh. at that time? Or JP4 and JP8, and or or was it was it an, uh, a, a supplementary system that was adding things to what was coming out of the rear, uh, and so that that was a shock when we realized that it was classified the fuel of the jets, commercial and military, mm. is classified, and you cannot get the formulas for these things. Wow. And we knew we were into, um, yes, military uh, control over the geoengineering programs. We understood that. Mm -hmm. uh, then, uh, you know, and the way this was going, just, just get an aerial perspective on this. This is, this is entirely an internet uh, resistance movement, you might call it, of, of observing what's going on to figure out what isn't going on, i.e., it's just sort of accidental how all this stuff comes out of these jets because the military this and the commercial jets that. There's a lot of commercial jets. Uh, to realize that that was not the only thing at play here. Uh, so the, the people doing that are just people. Yeah. I mean, this is a real groundswell movement. Yeah. Uh, none of us have... Uh, we have one PhD in our resistance movement, and that's... Wow. Uh, that's Mr. Uh, Marvin Herndon. And Marvin Herndon uh, had extreme trouble in getting his papers published sure. because the, uh, the terrible peer review system, which has been complicit for years, uh, it was, would refuse to have his papers published. Uh, his, he now is self-publishing his own books, for wow. example. And um, otherwise, most were just people. Uh, one of my favorite uh, cloud watchers, I call them, uh, is out in uh, Wyoming, a very freelance uh, um, kind of 
desert man mm -hmm. who does a great job of photographing and comment, commenting on the various delivery of the clouds because these are not real clouds. I mean, that, that took a few years too. Well, right. Wait a minute, those are not moisture and, uh, and, and particulates up there. What, what is that? It's plasma. These are yeah. all plasma clouds wow. and they're created by electromagnetics uh, and gases. So, uh, and they can be moved. And then sometimes you'll see something amazing. Like you feel like you're losing your mind where you see a cloud stays in the same place for hours in the sky, yeah. never moves. I mean, how can that be? There are, yeah. there are breezes blowing through and other clouds are moving, but that cloud is not moving. If you've you ever see what taken, I mean? Yeah. Take so, a hot air balloon up and, and then you, you begin to understand that not only is everything always moving, in, in with 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 air and wind and motion but but also as you get into different altitudes you yeah know, everything changes the the barometric pressure changes you know certain winds are known to be stronger in certain places it's, right. the, it's just uh there's a lot of unnatural things that if people were a little more educated about the the, the way things are supposed to work then they might start to notice the, th the inconsistencies more um yeah. And and part of it is they're waiting. They feel that if it were important, yeah, they would be told. Yeah. And that's a, a very wrong way of thinking of this. It's more like, <laughs> yeah, if it's important, you won't be told. There'll be yeah. a deafening silence around that particular right. aspect. So, uh, so what it requires is people who really spend the time to watch. Now that cuts out all the busy people, all the people paying mm -hmm. their mortgages and. They're at full time jobs Working, yeah. and they got the kids at home and you know, that that's that's they're not gonna do this. So uh, then you have the city problem where you have other pollutants that are going yeah. up and and so people are not accustomed there's your, there's to paying your majority attention. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. So you see the problem. I mean, in a way, I can imagine how thrilled the elite that's who I blame anyway. I use that yeah. sort of oh, umbrella I'm term. You. Uh, that were when they realized that, um, yeah, we're going to take over the environment first, and then we'll have the, we'll, we'll create the transhuman uh, race mm -hmm. uh, in uh, with, you know, after we've readied the human population by taking away their health, mm -hmm. making them breathe in things that are bad for them, make the medical and the pharmaceutical industries very wealthy, who mm -hmm. can then control all those people that are coming because they have health problems and create tremendous watch lists, collect masses of data for our supercomputers to continue to develop. Uh, I can imagine how thrilled they were that, yeah, they would use the terrain theory uh, in order to take over the environment first and then funnel in a lot of elements that a natural human being simply cannot hold their health beside, not to mention their mentation. Not to mention being able to think right. and have common sense, etc. So that's how I see it. And, you know, a lot of people think that I'm uh, paranoid because I'm blaming the elite. Well, they're the ones with the money. Why? They're the ones with the they're, technology. It's their agenda. It's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who else would we blame? It's the, I mean, sure, it's compartmentalized. And, and most people who are actually, this, and this is how they get away with it so well, well, this is what this is very hard for people to understand. Most people who are what's the word perpetrating the the crime, who are driving the planes, who are spraying the gas, are not aware of what they're doing. They're told they're doing something else, and like lemmings, they go ahead and do. Yeah. But you know, and and it, the people who have realized what they are doing, and and the very few people who have stopped and said. I realized this is what I was spraying or this is what I was, I was piloting this plane for so long. They told me I was, you know, spraying pesticide and it turned, I realize now, you know, those people are silenced and, and, you know, they're made to be discredited and they're, you don't hear about them. They're not given a microphone to talk about what they realized on mainstream. And there's very few of them. So, um, and then, you know, and then go to the, let's take another level of it, go to the the conferences in 2015. There was a UN conference and there was a, there was a Chemtrail, Chemtrails Carbons conference. And this is where everybody signed on the dotted line 
to pay X amount of money because of uh, carbon sequestering, et cetera. Okay, so when I heard that, I was like, I couldn't believe my ears. Hmm. Carbons? <laughs> they're saying carbons? Car we need carbons. We need carbons for life. And they're telling me that it's bad for your life. What, what is going on? I, I just, and meanwhile, I already knew they were destroying the trees with the, uh, particularly with the aluminum. Uh, and they were trying to get rid of forests because I realized they wanted synthetic forests. Mm -hmm. So I was like, they're getting rid of the forests, which need carbon to produce oxygen. We're 16% lower on the entire planet of the oxygen that we used to have. And now they're telling us that we all need to pay money to have them sequester the carbons and take them out of it. I was like, what? It, this is crazy. This is crazy. It made no models. sense. Made no sense. That's, and that's uh, what they've done. And it's still going on. Oh, yeah. It's and and, that, and, it's, and that's a lot of educated PhDs who are buying that crap. The, the, I, I mean, it just shows you what, what education has become. Oh, it's people have no idea. I mean, the education system is part and parcel of this of this weaponized weaponization. You know, I mean, there's a reason why the people with uh, PhDs and doctorates were some of, you know, some of the most outspoken and first people to jump along the let's just call it the mRNA train, um, <laughs> you know. Uh, 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 of course, I, I mean, I lived in New York City, so I heard it from all the intelligence, the intelligence the of New York City. People. You know, there's yeah. just they just know so much. Yeah, much and, more. And, than and, and so little, you know, and, and, yeah. and they're like, you're not a scientist. I'm like, um, no, <laughs> but I can but I can talk to the earth and you can't apparently because you have no idea what you're just, I mean, you're regurgitating what they're telling you. And I'm telling you, they don't have your best interests at heart, yeah. you know, but, but I mean, Ivy league, I'm, I'm like, give me a break that these people are pathological liars. They don't even know they're the, to lie for them is to breathe. But, you know, the, the, the weaponization. And I know that you talk a little bit about this, you know, allegedly there's a CIA chemtrails handbook. And, and, and I, and I'm wondering if you could tell our audience a little bit about well, it. No. You might be thinking of, I'm not sure what you're referring to, but the one that comes to mind when you said that is people don't know that the word chemtrails actually comes from the U.S. Air Force, which used the word chemtrails on their Chemistry 101 manual at the U.S. Air Force Academy. And that's where the term came from. And the wow. CIA pulled that term and turned it into... Uh, a, uh, a a malapropism to uh, to dump on people like tinfoil hats, mm -hmm. uh, like conspiracy theorists, etc. So um, yeah, I always let people know that the word chemtrails. If you wonder where that came from, it came from the U.S. Air Force. Uh, it was their term. Wow, uh, I, didn't, first. I didn't realize that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's telling. Um, you also talk about the concept of of the space fence in your book and how it's being Very used to yeah. neurologically herd humanity. Can you break down, um, you know, yeah. what that process is like for our listeners so that they can begin to contemplate potential ways to protect themselves from this? Well, from the, the term space fence is from Lockheed Martin and Lockheed Martin is the number one weapons, uh, so so called so called defense contractor, but really a weapons contractor for the U.S. Among military, and uh, Lockheed Martin owns all the patents for the space fence. Now the space fence, we had it as a simple uh, radar installation sort of necklace across the southern Midwest uh, United States, all the way from from coast to coast. We had that, and it was supposedly a missile defense program. Uh, what it really was doing was uh, was hitting radar up, uh, you know, various ways of testing out the control that we had at that time over uh, the ionosphere. Now, we didn't really have control over the ionosphere, total control, until 2013, and that was done by HARP. HARP was the uh, phased array antenna system, very important 
to understand what a phase array is. It's very different from the radial antenna system that sort of does this and broadcasts everywhere. It's where you can take uh, a variety of smaller waves and combine them into one beam, one very powerful beam. And that's how HARP is really used is through that, it's phased arrays. And it made a beam, it makes a beam, still, it's still operant. They told us that they, they, uh, they warehoused it back in 2013, but that was not true. It's that yeah, the University of Alaska at Fairbanks took over the management of it. Uh, it's kind of like, um, you know, the LANO, the uh, Los Alamos National Labs was pretty much run by a UC Berkeley for years and years. So it's kind of like that. Anyway, um, so uh, the, the heart got complete control over the ionosphere. So it, when people ask me, how is HARP a weapon system? And probably the most impressive weapon system of the world because it's scalar in dimension. Mm. And, and that's a very big topic, but you know, scalar is a good thing, but it has been turned into a weapon, much like many things that are good things. Yeah. A lot of things have been weaponized. Uh, so the scalar waves were able to puncture the ionosphere, which starts out, I believe, about 40 kilometers above us and then continues up and is sort of contiguous with the magnetosphere. And the magnetosphere, which goes all the way up to 22,000 kilometers into space, that is pretty much subject to CERN. Hmm. Okay, it's important to understand these massive weapon systems. And if you wanted, if you really were serious about recognizing what they they look like when they're doing what they can do, because they're used for a lot of things, mm -hmm. not just not just destruction. But when you saw 9-11, that was a scalar weapon. And my guess, it was HARP working with one or two other ionosphere keters in the northern latitudes. And my guess would be Brookhaven National Labs and, um, and, uh, and, and one in Norway. So uh, this weapon system is not used very much because that 9-11 uh, was very effective in informing the world of the, the scope of the weaponry that we had. And I believe it was primarily done for that, was to announce to the world that the United States of America had this weapon. That's, that's my, my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the book that I think everyone should own a copy of is uh, Judy Wood, Ph.D., uh, where did the towers go? Hmm. And it's uh, full color, uh, probably at least a thousand pictures in the pages. Very nicely done. Not very good binding, I might add, but beautiful <laughs> pictures, perfect pictures. And Judy is being a uh, scientist. She explains a lot of things. She does not jump to conclusions. She's very thorough. And she has been marginalized and discredited because I believe because she's a PhD yeah. and they wanted to get rid of her. So the idea that it was completely done by demolitions inside the built inside the towers is not true. However, right. I would say that there probably were demolition yeah. uh, agents in the building to back it up. I believe uh, so. Yeah. And uh, and so you know when the firemen talk and Judy's got some amazing pictures, amazing photographs of that whole thing. Very, very, very hard to watch to, to look at. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, firemen complained about wading through debris, dust, which was magnetic. And what <laughs> happened is you saw the not you saw what this weapon can do. It completely. Uh, Demolecularizes hmm. matter, and uh, and that's and that would include bodies as well. So, so it's a very serious weapon, Harp is, because uh, it has more power uh, than a lot of other ionosphere keters. But you can still, it will always use two to three other uh, ionosphere keters. Uh, this is uh, called um, uh, in, 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 interferometry. 
And what it means is that these beams, you send one out from one uh, one unit, one ionospheric feeder, mm-hmm. uh, another beam out. And then if you've got a holograph at all, like the jets that were used for 9-11, those are holograms, uh, then you will, you'll you'll have a third beam in order to give it a 3D uh, appearance. And those, uh, those can come from anywhere. So, you know, HARP is still extremely powerful, but uh, it usually works with two or three others. And that would be for... Big storm systems, uh, earthquakes, uh, the tomography going under the earth to get those plates to move in a certain way. Like what happened uh, in Turkey. The, the yeah. you know, there was a lot of harp. The name so. was was brought to the forefront. Some people who had, you know, much more of a uh, of an audience than they probably normally would mentioned harp, and there were some allegations made uh, that. Harp was responsible, and people were like, "What's Harp?" <laughs> um, yeah, the uh, high, uh, you know, the high altitude aurora, uh, high altitude auroral research project. I mean, you know, I hardly ever talk about Harp now, whereas for years I was talking yeah. about pretty much nothing else. But um, then uh, I wanted to bring in um, also regarding uh, the, the Harp system. That can also be used for a very important thing. And the guy who talks about that is a a Barry Trower. He's a a wonderful British Navy uh, microwave expert. And there are many videos of Barry talking. He's getting very old. We're going to lose a real treasure uh, when Barry goes. I I really adore him. Maybe I'll try to reach out to him and see if he wants to. Yes, he, he, he would. Uh, okay. If you set everything up, because he refuses to have any electronic uh, devices at all, he doesn't have a phone. Oh, okay. He doesn't have a computer. He, you know, he's he knows he knows what this technology does to us, yeah. how it weakens us. So um, anyway, Barry has one video. You might be able to find it where he talks about the heart uh, and its power because it's run through the ionosphere. Because that's what I always say to people, that the, the fact that we have a weapon which controls the, I, we control the ionosphere, that is a huge thing. And then there's CERN. And of course, America has a, a, a very big investment in CERN, even though it's on the yeah. border of Switzerland oh, yeah. and France. So, um, you know, these, these are big weapons. This is what I always tease people with, that this, these are Atlantean weapons. These are, mm-hmm. these are powerful, powerful weapons that, You know, Atlantis ended in a huge world flood that every mythology of every culture in the world has has a myth about. So people um, are learning about that flood now, thanks to Graham Hancock's series. They're realizing that the flood was real. It really has real. And it came on really fast. And they don't have much of an explanation for it. But those of us who have been studying certain uh, what they would call myths you know we have an explanation for it. go ahead i'm sorry go ahead yeah no no it was technology you're right so um so the uh okay so i talked about the about the control over the ionosphere the other Space thing time. that explains yeah. the ability of uh of the certainly the u.s military and its geoengineers to control pretty much any weather system in the world uh, or to uh, to uh, a very large, larger than you can believe degree, is that we control the jet stream as well. So we control the ionosphere and we control the jet stream. Uh, that that means yes, you, the jet stream makes it so that we can use weather as a weapon, which is what we do. We mm-hmm. you know we uh, we heavy hand everyone in the world, every nation in the world, to behave in ways that we want. Uh, and yet now uh, Russia and China have their own systems uh, oh, yeah. and we, so you know this this is inevitable we we would have ended up back in this historical uh hiccup of the um of the atlantean times mm-hmm. when uh it was a very similar in my opinion this is all me and uh that this is a, a very similar to what was going on then so so it looks like we're going to repeat history to some degree because <laughs> it's it. not done properly and you know that's the way it is if you don't you don't that's right uh, deal with your history you're you're doomed to repeat it oh i um, say it all the time uh, yeah, i agree so I, I think i gave you a few tips on the weaponized uh 
version. Oh, yes, this is what I wanted to finish with. Barry talks about, Barry Trower talks about how um, HARP and its control over the ionosphere make it so that they can bounce uh, frequencies off of the ionosphere from here, that's thousands and thousands of miles, uh, and, uh, and, and then, uh, you know, like trigonometry, put it wherever they want on the face of the earth, and then that, uh, that, will, that could produce a, a catastrophe there. Um, another thing it can do, according to Barry, is say they have a frequency for a disease, that, mm. uh, like Ebola, uh, and they wanted um, India to, to yeah. have a, an outbreak. They could easily uh, broadcast through the phased array antenna beam up to the ionosphere, bounce it off the ionosphere, and bring it, bring the frequency down to wherever they want it, and boom, there we go. Wow. That's the other weapon part. Then the final one that I'll say is that HARP is able, through uh, its various um, interferometry connections to all the space fence, this is all space fence stuff I'm mm -hmm. telling you, uh, through all of these different towers and, and radar installations and next rads and, and whatever to uh, broadcast a constant frequency that would include the wind, wind farms, that would include the fracking wells, uh, a constant frequency for like your behavior, yeah. for your fear quotient, for your confusion. All of these have a certain frequency, and uh, and that's a done deal, it says Barry. So wow. you get the picture. Yeah, and and you and in your opinion, do you think that they're broadcasting all the time now? And yes. how often do you think that they are? I mean, I know they're manipulating the weather on the daily. To for no, all of the weather is controlled. All you of believe, it. You believe all of it's controlled. All of it is controlled. Wow. I mean, it's it's one atmosphere. It's easy to see. One mm -hmm. atmosphere, one ionosphere, one jet stream. What can I say? Yeah. And so, what's when Russia and China, you know, start pressing their buttons? Are they gonna? And so, and my other question is, you know, if I'm, if I know there's an unspoken agreement, you know, there's a lot of unspoken treaties, agreements, you know, there's secret space programs, you know, there's with a lot the of elite. things yeah, with, in, the elite. with the, with the elite. And then the, 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 the politicians that are in their pocket, the few of them that have any knowledge, you know, um, and there's very few of them, you know, the, we have a, we have a, a, an Antarctic treaty, you know, from 1959, I think it's been in effect, that, it, that is basically a, about seven, it's a seven nation, you know, uh, space program that's been in, uh, you know, been in effect and since the late 50s, you know, and, and most people in government have no idea. That, that you mean the G7? Are you talking about the G7? I'm talking about the, um, the, 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 I forgot what it's called. I was just reading about it. The, uh, I think it's from 1959 is the Ant Antarctic uh, Treaty, and it's it, there's about seven nation states: America. Oh, okay. okay. Is it? Um, that would, well, Antarctic would definitely be seven because the property of the Antarctica itself has been divided among there, seven nations. Yeah. Then, it, then it's seven. Yeah. Um, but I, the secret space program entails all the northern latitude yeah. uh, countries uh, that run the southern latitude countries. That's the way it is here. Yeah, and and I've been doing a lot of uh, research and deep diving and trying to educate people about Antarctica, about what is has been there, what 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 has you know recently taken up residence there. I say recent, like last hundred years. <laughs> what goes in and out of there very frequently, um, and, and, you know, up and down and around. And people, you know, what people should try and understand about how much has been hidden from them. Um, but speaking of hidden, you know, I know you got a chance to edit some real life stories from MK, MK Ultra survivors. Now, I, I like you understand MK Ultra is was was a cornucopia of data for these 
sick people, you know, and that they used what they learned, not just in MK Ultra, but Project Artichoke and, and all of its predecessors leading up to MK Ultra. MK Ultra being the kind of the probably the most well known now. 149 um, sub projects, yeah. 149, you know, yeah. and, and this, you got a chance to edit some of the real life stories from actual survivors, not, mm -hmm. not people who are victims of, you know, the, what, what they have applied to, to countries and to nations to get the desired effect, but people who were the participants most of the time, uh, unknowing and un unwilling you know slaves you, they're slaves yeah slaves based but glorified slaves and yeah i tell people all the time i'm like you know you don't understand what's going on underground in this country and around the world you you, you just you, you don't most people wouldn't have the stomach to begin to try to yeah. understand you know but um I, I wanted to i've always wanted to have uh, an opportunity to talk to someone who could s speak to this you know can you share a little bit with our audience and what, what some of those accounts were like? Well, um, well, that, that, that's a whole other show. Cause yeah, I, mean, is, I, I, I spent, right. I spent 10 years on MK ultra, so My I God, know a yeah. lot about it, but I wanted to, there is a little anecdote I could tell you to give you an idea of the, of the breadth of this program. Okay. So uh, the guy who helped me write under an ionized sky was named Billy Hayes and Billy Hayes is called the harp man because he was the team leader uh, of the, the guys who put together the phase array antenna uh, acreage up in Gakona, Alaska. And Billy worked on possibly about 240 different military sites around the world in building these uh, phased array antennas for the secret space program. All right, so Billy called me after I was on Coast to Coast and said, you know, all these people are saying that, it, that listening to you sounds like me, and I, I'm here to tell you, you need to write another book because <laughs> there's something much more, there's much more going on in this, uh, though you did a great job introducing people to it. So I started working with Billy Hayes, and so over time, we worked together for about three years, uh, I learned about his past, and he, he was MK Ultra, wow. and he was MK Ultra from the time he was eight years old. His father was CIA, mm -hmm. and of course, when you work for the CIA, you pretty much have to give the CIA permission to use your children as well. That's how dirty and dark the mm -hmm. CIA is uh, and has always been. It was started by the Nazis that we brought over. It was not started just through the OSS right. from World War II. It was a Nazi program. It's still a Nazi program in my mind. Okay, so Billy helped me. Without him, I, I could not have understood all the technical aspects of the space fence and how it was constructed through Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, etc. And Billy and I got very close. And he was extremely fond of me because, in a way, when you're raised MK Ultra. Mm. You, you never have real love. You never really, he had four or five wives. Uh, and, uh, and I don't know how many children he had, but he had 48 grandchildren by the time he died. Wow. Uh, not even two years ago now. Uh, I love Billy and his, his MK Ultra background included, uh, you named uh, Behold the Pale Horse, Bill, what's his name? Bill Cooper. Okay, he, he, Bill Cooper was a friend of his. Uh, Ted Gunderson of the FBI, yeah. head of the FBI in LA, was a friend of his. Uh, Mike Mike um, Mike McCandlish, mm. uh, the uh, the wonderful artist who was uh, uh, drawing uh, draws all the Air Force pictures and that sort of thing. And then there are two more who I don't remember right now. But let me just say the punchline. These guys were raised in a on, on military bases. In Billy's case, it was mostly Eglin Air Force Base. Uh, but it was uh, they went to school with each other, and the schools were completely uh, CIA. Mm. 
-hmm. in that the CIA could come and take the children out in the middle of the day, take them to another room and program them, and then send them back to their room. Uh, they then went together to a high school, uh, uh, and, um, and they, same thing there. So that's how it works, folks. Mm -hmm. that's, what, that's what your tax dollars pay for, is to support the CIA's enslavement mm -hmm. and torture of children. I mean, you know, we go tisk tisk over all the children that are kidnapped and, and used in, uh, in, in child uh, trafficking yeah. and all, all the things that go on. I mean, there's not a day that goes by that I'm not thinking about that Yeah, because it bothers me. It really, really bothers me. So um, I will be writing a book on torture, on no-touch torture, and um, that's my, my next book after nice. I finish the second edition uh, of the synthetic biology book for this publishing company. So uh, just to give you an idea of, of how enmeshed MK Ultra is, a lot of people think of it and think, oh yeah, that was way back then. Yeah, it happened then. That, that yeah. was not way back then. It's going on to this very day. And now you're about to be included in it because they've got the electromagnetic space fence that can pull you right into this. And yeah. pretty soon people who don't have a firm grasp of who they are and what their consciousness is, the difference between their consciousness and the TV's consciousness or between themselves and their neighbor, if they don't know what that is, they won't be able to tell Goodness what consciousness sure. is running through their head pretty soon. You see, see how it works? Yeah. yeah. That's why we need to work on things that are not fun. They're yeah. not feel good. They're not, oh, Ilana, you're so dark. You're so depressing. Well, you know, this was left for us. That's right. To deal with. And it's got to be dealt with. It's, for the it's future. karma that has to be addressed. You know, let's put it in a, every, let's put it in a way that's simple. You know, if you, if you, if you don't address your karma your your trauma it's going to come out in your relationships and you're seeing it unfold on a global scale yeah. and they can say what they want about people who insist on trying to bring this to the attention of the collective but the fact is that it remains unaddressed and unhealed therefore unintegrated and yeah. we are walking towards a very sharp and steep cliff as a society and until people wake up and start looking where they're going you know there's going to be those of us who insist on talking about it trying uh to wake people up before it's too late because you cannot you just we just can't go we can't go on the way we are we're good we, society as a whole will end up enslaved most of us are already some of us you know are are free of the programming but it has been because of dark nights many dark nights of the soul that that most of us who are free are free and that's yeah. not it's not a fun place to go but when you want to purge yourself of the programming you got to face yourself and well in a meaningful courage. life i mean a that's meaningful right. life imagine that I, I don't care about fun and i don't care about happiness particularly not that i'm looking for depression but right. I want a meaningful life. I want to. I want to serve humanity while I'm here. And I really don't understand people who don't care about other people, even if they are strangers. Yeah. Why don't Why don't we care? I, I don't. I don't really understand that. That's uh. That's that's a that's the reptilian nature of of this species. You know, there's we have all kinds of DNA in us, and I and I think that. You know, the, the, it's the environment that signals the DNA, right? And so when people get in a certain situation, particularly situations that they love to put us in, which are survival states, you know, then we become very selfish. We become, it's very easy not to, you know, think about anyone else or care about anyone else when you're in a state of, you know, uh, I got to look out for mine. Yeah, you but we've been, we've been comfortable and it, we've been surrounded with convenience and comfort and money for years. Yeah. Like we don't we're not in need. We haven't been in need and yet we have persisted in not caring. No, I think it's programming. I think it's the it's, beep 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 folk scene coming in. Both, yeah. That makes us not care about others or just be uh, 
narcissistic beyond belief. I don't know, really. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I think it's. I think there are many people who are who, who are right, especially right now, are struggling and are you know are far too concerned about how they're going to pay this month's rent and the, all the bills and get the kids where they need to be with food in their bellies. You know, I think that is going on as well, um, sadly, in, in, in this country, as well as other countries. Um, but there's just, uh, it's, it's so much, like you said. Uh, but, you know, I appreciate all your, your work. Um, and I'm, and I'm, it's, I'm just, I've just discovered it not very, not very long ago. So I'm diving in and I, I'm going to be um, passing it on through, through my work. And like you said, you know, you affect one person and that person affects more. And that's how we, we spread knowledge and power into society, you know, because knowledge is power and awareness is, is, is one of the greatest currencies we can have these days to protect ourselves. And I, I wanted people to know that the color edition, uh, six, there's 60 color uh, photos of the geoengineered transhumanism is only available at the Rudolf Steiner bookstore in Seattle, Washington. Otherwise, you can go on Amazon or whatever, but you'll get black and white there. Uh, and um, I recommend people who are interested in how long we've been, like the MK Ultra period was my youth. Mm -hmm. So I wrote a series called Sub Rosa America, A Deep State History. It's a fictional base, but it's really a history of America since Kennedy's assassination, which, you know, I had tea with Kennedy in the Rose Garden. It was a huge experience for me. Wow. And so I, I wrote those books and could not write fast enough, by the way, to, wow. uh, to honor Kennedy, uh, King and Kennedy, uh, as, as the greatest blow to my 60s mm -hmm. generation that we ever experienced and so uh, I recommend people to read it it's uh, it's quite a journey and it has a cult following of maybe a few hundred people because I've never really made an effort to sell it because I've been in geoengineering I've been yeah. I've been worrying over this for the last 13 years so I'm I gonna, recommend that as well I'm gonna read that one as well um, and uh, I, I, I appreciate your time you know when you uh, are, are done with your last with your next book i'd love to have you back on by then i will have made my way through the rest of your books and, and we can have a, a, a another conversation and see where we're at um but I, okay. I i applaud you and i appreciate you for all your work alana you know yeah. um the, the, we, you. we need we people like you are are or what I think is going to make the difference um, if we're going to turn things around. So I, yeah. I'm very grateful for your time and for your knowledge. Tell so everyone check out a lot. I'm going to include a links to Alana's website, which is fantastic. There's a lot of stuff on there. You'll find links to her books that are out um, and her work. And um, is there any, is there anywhere else people can, can go to find, find you if they want to keep up with you and what you're, on the ilanafreeland.com website, you'll see my Proton Mail. Um, you know, I do read it. Sometimes it takes months because I get so much, but um, I do read it and I do respond where I feel that I have something to say. Uh, and um, I give talks now and then, uh, and I have, I have social media, uh, only Facebook, evil Facebook. Uh, they allow me one site now. They took down two. And, uh, and then I have, uh, and that's called uh, EMF uh, uh, planetary, uh, planetary Engineering. And then I have a Gab.com one for a very different audience. And I put up, uh, I post every day. And okay. I, I, I comment on, on many posts. It's, a, it, it's how I do it. I know that okay. I could send them out to a special, I have a list of a thousand people, but I just use that for email blasts when mm -hmm. I want them to know something specific so they don't get overwhelmed by too much mail. Okay. Okay. My, 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 my good friend and my, he is my resident skeptic who I have a debate show with called believers versus skeptics. We had an episode about fluoride. He said, if you get to it, just ask her what she thinks of fluoride. I'm just curious. And I'm like, I can tell you already what she thinks of. Oh yeah. What do you think of fluoride? Destroyer of intelligence. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. 
And I don't know what happened to people that they allowed them to put the fluoride in the water, but the, the fluoride was left over from World War I, I might I add. Know. Waste. It was talk. It's literally waste. Toxic and waste. And the toothpaste. I mean, that was the last time I was to a God, certain you know, dentist as I argued with him about the fluoride in the toothpaste. And he was totally wrong. I hope he sees that now. <laughs> you know, and that another thing, ongoing court cases, they just keep delaying. They don't publish the findings. They don't want people to know. They don't ask no. permission, you know? No. Well, I'm glad I got to ask that. A lot of it's been real. I, I will definitely we'll we'll talk again. This was um, all right. Thank this, this you, was great. Folks. I appreciate yeah. your time. You take care yeah. and good good luck with everything. Blessings. Thank you to you too. Thank you. Yeah.